In China, the story of the cross once seemed as strange and as far away as the other side of the universe. But today, its message is here, right in our midst. During the Boxer Rebellion, 236 Western missionaries and 23,000 Chinese Christians were killed. In the following 50 years, more Western missionaries came to China. They established 19 universities, over 6,000 elementary schools and high schools, and more than 900 hospitals. The number of Chinese Christians grew to 700,000. The Chinese Communist Party believed this success was the result of imperialist cultural invasion. They expelled all Western missionaries, forced Chinese missionaries to renounce their religion, and mandated a secular education for all Chinese. Fifty more years have passed, and today there are approximately 70 million Christians in China, an increase of 100-fold. During the Cultural Revolution in China, the flame of hatred and bitterness burned hot. At the same time, a quiet stream of love and forgiveness struggled to quench the thirst of the faithful. In 1960, a few families started gatherings which had very few participants. By 1967, these house church gatherings became very widespread. An old lady next door was a devout Christian, and I was strongly against Christianity. One day she came over for a chat. She taught me to kneel and pray. Later, I became a Christian. At our first gathering, there were three to four people. Soon we had six, then eight, and at times as many as 30 people. All the meetings were held in secret. Every time we met, we prayed together fervently. Of course, we had to leave right after the service to escape arrest by the Red Guard and the militia. For 30 or 40 years, we kept our house church alive. In the beginning, there were only my mother, my brother, and I. Later, our gatherings grew to seven, then eight, then ten, and gradually, more and more. In 1972, I received a letter from my brother-in-law who lived in my hometown of Henan. He said, hurry up, come home soon. He told me there were some young people who wanted to devote their lives to spreading the gospel. When I checked it out, I found it was true. So how did they preach the gospel? Well, during the day, they were hiding in caves and in orchards or in barns. After 10 o'clock at night, they would come out and find other believers to pray with. Sometimes we met in the cornfield. Sometimes we met in the graveyard. Those were the best places for gathering and prayer. I remember there was a time we lived in an empty field for more than six months. No matter what time it was, evening, midnight, or dawn, all I had to do was walk by someone's window and call his name. All of them got up right away and contacted the others. In no time at all, three rooms would be filled with people. With the end of the Cultural Revolution, secret house church activities gradually came out into the open.
After the death of Mao Zedong, the Chinese people, cheated by a false god, began to search for the true god. For the first time in their lives, people from the lowest levels of society came face to face with God's unconditional love, with Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and with the knowledge that in God's temple they had value and dignity. How could they not rejoice, like everyone who has received the most precious gift in the world? The first time I went to church, I felt the atmosphere there was really good. I found true meaning in life. I found a peace that I never felt before, peace in the Lord. So I can say without reservation, I will follow God for the rest of my life. After the service, my soul felt especially sweet and joyful. Lord, how wonderful it will be if we can meet like this every day. I lay away for three nights, overwhelmed with joy. I thought, Lord, what have I received? Why am I so filled with joy? I have no money. I have no family. I have nothing. And you know, I was absolutely sure that this joy came from heaven. I didn't completely recover my health when I found Jesus, but there was a kind of indescribable joy within me. I didn't know where it came from. I thought it over and over, and I decided it was best to follow Jesus. My greatest joy was that finally I found the meaning of my life. When I look back, I'm very happy I didn't choose the path of sin. The Chinese have experienced a great deal of sin in this mortal existence, but never have they experienced the peace that comes from forgiveness and baptism by the Holy Spirit. The whole time the minister was preaching, I couldn't help crying. I really didn't understand why. I was afraid that other people might see my tears, so I tried to wipe them away without anybody seeing me. I kept my head bowed and I listened to the sermon. I remember it was about repentance through Christ's atonement for us. I always felt like I was the prodigal son, but the Lord's eternal love has not abandoned me. I'm so thankful that, so far, I've been able to serve God. One thing I'll never forget, it was only through God's grace that the wound inside me healed. When God came to me, He touched my heart, and the power of His message woke me up. I knew that He wanted to use me to help save other people. How amazing God's grace is! He loves each and every one of us. I decided to devote my life to His service. It's only through the love of God that I can live a better life. It gives me a purpose and a reason to live. Just as the sun cannot stop shining and seeds in spring cannot stop sprouting, these people answered a call from deep in their souls. They were reborn through Jesus. They could not help but dedicate themselves to God and become missionaries of the gospel. How 
fast time flies. I have been on this path for 16 years. Jang Chin Yoon was born and raised in an intellectual family. When she decided to dedicate her life to missionary work, she had a long talk with her father. He said to me, "You have three choices. If you like to continue your education, I will support you financially. If you like to keep on working as a teacher, I'll make all the arrangements. If you like a different job with my authority and connections, I can find you a good one." Think about it," I said. "I don't want any of that. Why not?" he asked. "What else do you want?" I told him I want to continue my work as a missionary. He gave a long sigh. "Qing Yun, if you ever get tired and feel you can no longer carry on, please come back home. Our door is always open to you." If you are happy living with your brothers and sister, and choose to do that for the rest of your life, please don't forget to write home, no matter how far away you are. My eyes were full of tears, and I was afraid to look up at my father. Then he asked me one last time if I was sure I wanted to leave. I said yes. I want to go. So he took out thirty dollars and said, "I don't have much money left. Take this with you for the road." My mother used to beg me to come home too. She said, "What use is it all this traveling?" So I tell her it was all for God's love. If I don't spread the gospel, many other people will answer His call. But God has planted the seed in my heart. He called me and gave me this mission and responsibilities, and I can't refuse to follow His will. This courageous girl grew up in a small town, but spent most of her youth in caves and in jail. There was a lot of pain, and also a lot of joy. God's love has led me onto this path. I was weak, I was lost, but I have never regretted my choice. Today, Jang Chin Yoon and her husband are in charge of training missionaries for house church activities. More and more people, including their families, have begun to understand and support them. With the company of your love, we will keep following your footsteps till the end of our lives. Since the 1980s in mainland China, tens of thousands of devout Christians like Jiang Chinyun have dedicated their lives to the Lord. From 1981 on, I completely devoted myself to this path. I left my hometown with several other girls and went by bicycle and on foot to more than ten counties nearby. In every village, we talked to people we met on the street. Many of them were really interested. They never seen a group of girls spreading the gospel. A lot of sick people were healed by the power of our prayers. Every time we traveled, tens of thousands of people became followers of Jesus. This is how we established the house churches. In the beginning, there were miracles in every village we visited. Many missionaries were gifted with the power of healing. We were able to heal the sick with the touch of our hands. We would visit a new village. We would sing in the yards or farmhouses. Many neighbors would drop by just out of curiosity. We would teach them about Jesus. Then, if the villagers said they would accept the gospel, we would kneel and pray together. Every time there was a celebration, a wedding, or a funeral, we would beat our drums and strike our gongs to spread the gospel. 
We used to put on plays, skits, dances, or tell Bible stories in order to spread the gospel. We spread the gospel on buses, trains, and in the streets. We knocked on every villager's door. We went into their homes and told them all about the good news. What is the gospel? Sit down, please. Everybody sit down. We visited every corner of our local area and spread the word. After it was established locally, we traveled to other cities and provinces. We've been to Shanxi, Hubei, and Ningxia. Back in 1980 and 1981, that was the golden era for Wenzhou House Church. From the remote regions of Xinjiang, from the desolate land in the northeast, we had massive gatherings. The Holy Spirit came down upon us with abundance. Then, in 1981, the government re-established the Three Self Church. The good times were over. As soon as the government re-established the Three Self Church, house churches became illegal, and it was forbidden to spread the gospel. In 1983, the government gave orders to arrest a group of Christians who they labeled as the Gang of Agitators. I was arrested because they said I belonged to the Gang of Agitators. What on earth did I agitate for? Did I incite people to overthrow the communist regime? Did I announce that I was against the one-child policy? I would not complain if I had, but all I did was shout, Christ is Lord! And for that, I was convicted of anti-revolutionary activities and thrown in jail for 15 years. This former Red Guard leader found understanding and comfort in Christ. Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but he was crucified on the cross. I didn't do anything wrong either. During the Cultural Revolution, I was a fighter and a destroyer of lives, but I was treated as a hero. Now I am a righteous man, but I'm considered a criminal. Everyone who has been jailed for speaking the truth, please stand and come forward. Being thrown in jail is such a common occurrence that these faithful brothers and sisters are quite comfortable talking about their experiences. The persecution never stops. There are always some of us locked up. Some have been in and out of jail more than 10 times. Right now, we have 14 members in jail and 21 key members are on the government's wanted list. We have all suffered in jail to different degrees. There are about 40 of us. Three members were arrested recently, and they are still in jail. Since the government started cracking down the church in Hebei, all the active members have become wanted criminals. When they came to my home to arrest me, I wasn't there. So they took my father instead. They openly shared what went through their minds when they were caught. To tell you the truth, I was a little scared. But God gave me strength to overcome my fear. So I guess you could say I was well prepared. Suddenly, the cops burst in to arrest me. But thank God, after I was handcuffed, I calmed down and thought to myself, you're going to have to spend a few more years in jail. So just let it be. I felt very relieved. After we were arrested, we were filled with joy. There were more than 10 of us, and we sing hymns in the police car. The policemen shout, why are you singing? You have just been arrested. We reply, because we got a free ride. <laughs> Xiao Gai tried to escape arrest, but injured herself and is now handicapped. I climbed up to the roof to escape, but to my dismay, there was a policeman on guard. While we were struggling, he forced me right to the edge of the roof. Then he pushed me off. When I landed, I didn't feel any pain. 
But I couldn't stand up. I cried out to the sister, help me, help me. She came back and tried to pull me up, but just I couldn't. My leg was broken. After this, I lost all my inner peace. Christian are good people. Why don't the police arrest the real criminals and leave us Christian alone? Later, I prayed for that policeman. He didn't know what he was doing. Just as gold can endure refining in the hottest fire, true believers in God can shine through the deepest darkness. Chun Xia, the friend of Xiao Gai, was arrested three days before her wedding day. I was arrested on the 10th of August and then sentenced to three years in the labor camp. My brothers and sisters in Christ, including my fiancé, came to visit me the next day. Everyone cried except me. But after they left, I did go through a lot of struggling in my heart. I said to the guard, the truth is that I didn't commit a crime. She agreed, and I said, I'm innocent. Why did they give me a three-year sentence? She said they were afraid that I would follow the wrong path. Come on, I said. Because of their fear, I must pay with three years of my freedom? Then she started talking about how the laws were not perfect yet. All that time, I struggled hard in my soul. I paced back and forth from one window to another and kept asking, Lord, do you really mean I have to suffer like this for three years? Later, it was the Lord who comforted me. Before my arrest, every day we had read, talked, and sung about nothing other than the cross and the Bible. But when I was really walking on the same path, how come I still had to struggle so hard? I said, Lord, I know you will help me. You will see that I don't spend these three years in vain. While she was serving her sentence, Chun Xia couldn't stop worrying about her fiancé, Hai Sheng. I kept sending notes to Hai Sen, telling him not to wait for me. We were not that young anymore. I didn't want him to waste time waiting for me. Three long years. Soon after Chun Xia was arrested, Uncle Zhang asked me what I was going to do if Chun Xia had to spend three years in jail. Will my family accept this? Maybe I should consider someone else. I told him, I will wait for her, whether it takes three years or even 20 years. Every month on Visitor's Day, Hai Sheng would travel hundreds of miles by train to visit Chun Xia. Each visit was limited to 20 or 30 minutes. Hai Sun never missed a visit, and he always brought a letter with him. I wanted her to stop worrying about me. I wanted her to stop telling me not to wait for her. It hurt me. I told her I would still love her and marry her even when she became an old lady with gray hair. I've never shown anyone these letters. They gave me great comfort. I didn't feel too bad during the time in jail. I was happy. I told my brothers and sisters in Christ. God answered my prayers. I went through all the hard times with joy. Praise the Lord. Three months before the end of my sentence, I was released. Hai Sen and Uncle Zhang came to pick me up. I thought we both would burst into tears, but we didn't. When we got home, a lot of brothers and sisters were waiting for us. We were very emotional. My family was overjoyed. My mother started to sob. I didn't expect it to happen so fast. I was released on the 29th of April. On the 3rd of May, we were married. The brothers and sisters of our hometown had arranged the wedding ceremony for us.
And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. God told me His plan in this verse. Sometimes I wanted to blame God for what we had to go through, but at the same time, a voice within my heart would tell me, "Don't complain. God doesn't neglect anyone, anywhere, at any time." During the wedding, everyone kept wiping away their tears. I couldn't stop smiling, though I was crying too. Tears of thankfulness and joy. I knew that God was with me all the time I was in jail. Being forced to delay their wedding only deepened the love between this young couple. Three years in jail strengthened their faith, and despite the three years of torture, their happiness and their gratitude increased. Generation after generation, Chinese missionaries have struggled along a path that leads to the cross. The Chinese government refuses to acknowledge them, and China's huge population doesn't understand them. Around every corner, these missionaries encounter suffering and imprisonment. Yet, with no remorse and no regrets, they keep on their difficult path. 从母腹生下来那一天嘛，就是。My father passed away when I was born. My mother died when I was only three years old. Before I was eleven, I never had a pair of shoes or anyone to take care of me. It was a very painful life. I couldn't understand why I was born with such a bad fate. Why was I born without parents who cared for me? How come other people had good lives and I didn't? If there was a God, why didn't He help this poor, suffering soul? Finally, one day I was desperate and ready to commit suicide. But I heard a group of people singing. It was a cold, bleak night, and I wondered who on earth would find anything to sing about. So I walked towards the house. Someone saw me and called out, "Isn't that the homeless child that has no family?" They took me inside. My child. Believe in Jesus. He is the only one who can save you. They said. Then some elderly ladies taught me how to kneel and pray. They put their hands on my head and prayed for me with tears in their eyes. That night, I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. When the police in Tanghu County found out that there was a 14-year-old boy who had become a Christian, they started searching for me. After hiding in a pit for seven days. I became really hungry and exhausted. 
So I climbed out of the pit to get a breath of fresh air. Just my luck that a policeman happened to be passing by. He arrested me there and then. You are so young, but already you are an anti-revolutionary, he said. They denounced me, they tortured me, and they starved me. But I thought to myself, Jesus must be the way of truth. Otherwise, why is the great Communist Party so serious about it? Even a homeless teenager like me is seen as a threat. Jing, the orphan adopted by a Christian, became a missionary when he was 19. At first, I worked as a local missionary. After I got married, I carried my child on my back and started to travel to different provinces to spread the gospel. I built a lot of house churches. I was filled with joy. I paid no attention to the humiliation, the suppression, the poverty, and all the arrests. Lord, take pity on us. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for showing us the path which leads away from this imperfect world. We thank you for allowing us to share your burden. Lord, we thank you for watching over your church in China and for taking pity on your church in China. Although the Chinese church has suffered endless suppression, we see your presence in China. God is in charge here. I became a Christian in 1983, and I've been working as a missionary ever since. During that time, I was thrown in jail four times, three of which were in my own hometown, and the other was in Xinyang County. I was badly beaten up. Sometimes the guards beat me, and sometimes it was the other prisoners. I remember vomiting blood, lots of blood. The three or four of us sat in a circle and passed the bread around. That night we cried for a long time. We missed our families. We missed the Lord. I was jailed eight times for spreading the gospel. One time, a sister and I were handcuffed together around a pillar outside of the police station. Our feet weren't allowed to touch the ground at the same time. When my feet touched the ground, hers couldn't. When hers did, mine couldn't. We hung like that for four hours until our hands turned black and blue. They tortured me after I was arrested. They beat my face and it was severely swollen. My skin was burned by electric prods. The guard hit my head and my body with electric prods. I passed out and couldn't remember what happened later. I was struck by three or four cattle prods at the same time. The guards hit me everywhere and tied me up. It has been three years since that happened, and I still have the rope marks on my body. More than once, while enduring endless torture and extreme hardship, many missionaries raised questions to God. He answered their prayers in various ways and Without exception, all the missionaries found inner peace. I prayed to God to give me the answer, and he said to me, I can tell you nothing. That's my strongest memory, because it was during the darkest hours of my life, and God wouldn't answer me. Later, I said to God, even though you won't give me the answer, I still accept all this with gratitude. After I did that, my dark spiritual life was completely illuminated and revived. I told the Lord that I was afraid of going back to prison. If I were jailed again, it would be the eleventh time. I told God that I had enough of jail. I was terrified my body couldn't take it anymore. I heard a heartbreaking cry. It was from Christ himself. He cried out, Father, why hath you forsaken me? I heard his words so clearly. 
They flew from the cross directly into my head, and all at once I understood why Jesus wept. There and then I felt strong again. I realized that the Lord had not abandoned me. He wanted me to experience the cross. Jesus told us, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I don't have any hard feelings for what I went through. This is the same path our Lord Jesus walked down. Since the very first day I became a missionary, I knew this path was the path of cross. I was more than willing to take it. No matter what I have suffered, I have never blamed God. I made the decision to follow God. God found me and loved me. What I went through was all from God, and I am filled with joy. The government's persecution is no big deal. It's just a way of showing me God's blessing. That's all. Religion and politics must be separate. Because they believe in this principle, many Chinese Christians refuse to attend the government-controlled Three Self Church. Their house churches and missionary work are considered illegal by the government. Local government officials can arrest and fine them under national laws that regulate religion. Therefore, meeting and preaching in secret have become the only way Chinese Christians can survive. However, the degree of suppression varies in China. Churches in Wenzhou were the first to revive after the Cultural Revolution, but most of the church buildings are destroyed now. Churches in Hunan were revived later, but there are more martyrs and jailed Christians there than anywhere else. Although Chinese Christians do not oppose the government, they are considered illegal because they will not renounce their faith. They live righteously and faithfully under tyrannical rule. The Chinese authorities are completely mystified by the increasing number of house churches. They don't understand. They have no idea what we have been doing. So they call us anti-revolutionary. In fact, I think they know in their hearts that we're not anti-revolutionary. We think that the reason the government tries so hard to suppress us is because they don't understand what Christianity is about. It's a misunderstanding. We don't hate the government. The only wish we have is for everyone on earth to feel God's love, to receive God's love. Through all our hardships, God is training, preparing, and building His church in China. It is a blessing for the Chinese church. We are praying for our leaders in China, and also for those who suppress us. We wish them well. We've been telling our brothers and sisters that we should show respect to every member and branch of the government. It's God's commandment to respect authorities. In China, however, Christians are not understood in this way. The wars in Chinese history, such as the Taiping Rebellion and the Opium War, damaged people's trust. 
The government suppressed us because they are afraid that they don't understand our true belief. Therefore, as Christians in this country, I think we should pray for our country's leaders and for everyone in authority. Lord, we are willing to risk our lives in order to save our beloved country of China. Lord, we ask you to bless our beloved country. Please bless this country with your hands. Please bless this nation with your hands. You have shed your blood for the Chinese people. We thank you for bringing us your gospel and salvation in these last times. We thank you for opening the door to your gospel in China. Your love has come to us. It has come to the land of China. You have loved our country and people since the beginning of time. Many people in China deny you. They don't recognize you. They worship all kinds of idols. Lord, today we repent for our country. Lord, please withhold your anger. A person whose heart loves God also loves his country and his fellow human beings. A person who is willing to carry the cross is full of mercy. Such people may be badly mistreated, but they still feel sweet with love. They may be imprisoned, but their hearts are free. They may be despised, but are full of gratitude. God's Spirit and His mighty power have been with me over the years. To tell you the truth, I did go through a little suffering for Him. I was homeless at one time. Since I started following Him, I've gained so much. Despite all the hardships, God's path is still very sweet to me. I don't feel pain when I'm in pain. I don't feel hungry when I'm hungry. I don't feel alone when I'm pursued and put in prison. I don't feel depressed after I cry. I feel sweet. My whole life has been saved by God's love. Without God's love, nobody can give up worldly possessions and be his servants. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for us all. We are bound by his love and have no choice but to follow in his footsteps. I can picture the expression of pain on Jesus' face when he was crucified on the cross. I will never forget what it says in the Bible. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. He did not do it for himself.
Why has the cross, an instrument of torture and a symbol of humiliation, become a symbol of peace and good fortune? The path leading to the cross is paved with suffering and sacrifice. But why are people who walk along it filled with peace and joy? Why does suffering turn into happiness because of the cross? The answers all lie in Jesus. He was nailed to the cross because of his love for man, and he was resurrected three days later. Today he is living in heaven, in this world, and in the hearts of everyone who believe in him. Just as Jesus announced his victory through the cross, the faithful in China are building the church through suffering many hardships. Jail has become the faith-building training center for missionaries in China. Suppression has revived the spirit of the Chinese Christians. And never-ending arrests have helped to build teams of people spreading the gospel nationwide. The government keeps on tracking us down and arresting us. We have no choice but to leave home. But everywhere we hide, we spread the gospel. In the beginning, we didn't want to leave our homes, but it turned out to be just what God wanted. If it weren't for the persecution and the arrests, we probably wouldn't have built such a strong team. We became homeless. As we wandered from town to town, we worked at spreading the gospel. A lot of brothers and sisters in the same situation have gotten together. When I escaped from being arrested by the police, I became a full-time missionary. I was forced to leave my hometown but I continued to spread the gospel wherever I went. I have been to a lot of places over the years. Once we started to settle in one place, the police would come. Then we'd have to move on to another town. So bit by bit, our work has spread to many places throughout the country. Every one of these unexceptional farmers leads tens of thousands of house churches and millions of Chinese Christians. In fact, there is an ever-growing number of house churches secretly scattered in the villages, small alleys, and streets of China. Bless us with your abundant anointing. We ask you to pour out your spirit on this land. After visiting hundreds of house churches, what we know is only the tip of the iceberg. I don't know exactly how many house churches there are in China. There are 97 in my district. Two years ago, our two families moved here from Honan to Lhasa, Tibet. God led us to the Zhuang Tri in Guangxi two years ago. We have built seven house churches there. We established four house churches within four months of our arrival. We have been doing God's work here in Sichuan for about 10 years. The missionaries left their footprint in every corner of this land, and many tears were shed. Having interviewed hundreds of missionaries, it's still hard to imagine how successful they've been without much education or experience 
Nevertheless, they found ways to spread the gospel. When spring comes, gentle breezes blow and sweet showers moisten the dry land with abundance. Like springtime, when radiant glory is everywhere, the gospel has been spread all over China by the work of these ordinary farmers. There is no doubt that it is due to the mighty power of the gospel itself. Joyful hymns of praise are raised in every corner of this land, from the coast of the southeast to the border in the northwest, from the banks of Sunghua River to the Lansang River. From small villages to major cities, the seeds of faith have grown in the hearts of millions of farmers, students, civilians, and government officials. Dotching oil fields a model district in the Northeast set up personally by Chairman Mao has been home for nearly 100,000 faithful Christians since the 1980s. Crowds of people came to my home for Sunday service. No matter how much others made fun of me, how can an illiterate farmer like you teach anything? They sneered. Nevertheless, my congregation became too big to meet at one time, so we had to split in two, then three, then four, and then many, many more. There are 21 districts within the Daqing area, and each district has an average of 150 house churches, with an average of 30 members each. In other words, we have about 100,000 members within this area, and there are about 23 districts in the surrounding areas. At almost every major university, such as Beijing, Tsinghua, Xiamen, and Fudan, Christian students and teachers alike meet regularly. The gospel has also spread to the tribal groups in China. It has brought faith and dignity to the lives of people in the farthest reaches of China.
90% of our village became Christian between 1985 and 1989. 80% of our village has become Christian. There are very few people in our tribe who aren't Christian. I can preach in the languages of the Li Su tribe, Gan Yu tribe, and Hei Yi tribe. I can also communicate and sing in these languages. Today in China, there are countless devotees, hundreds of non-governmental seminaries, and thousands of Bible training centers. These faithful souls know they no longer belong to a corrupt and evil world. They live to shed blood and tears, even risk their lives, for the sole purpose of spreading the love of their Father in Heaven. I'm willing to devote my life to sharing with everyone who lives in pain and darkness that Jesus loves you. The true love of Christ cannot be found any place else. This is the promise I have made to the Lord. Lord, I will carry your cross and follow you, for it is the duty of your disciples. The hardships I've had are not sufferings, but true blessings from you. I know this is a long journey full of pain and tears, but I'm determined to follow your path faithfully. <laughs> Amen.